Our sun is more than four and a half billion years old. During this time, it slowly got larger and its brightness increased steadily. Here we are showing its size in comparison to the orbits of Mercury and here in comparison to the whole solar planet system. From a distance of initially 20 billion kilometers, we begin our flight into the Sun. We are now crossing the Earth's orbit at 150 million kilometers. Now reaching the Sun, whose radius is 700,000 kilometers. Three important quantities are shown on the slices of the open Sun. The production of energy, the brighter the more effective. The Sun is shining because hydrogen is converted into helium in the core. The chemical composition, the brighter the more helium is present. In the center, already about half of the hydrogen has been burned by nuclear fusion. The distribution of mass. The lines indicate how much of the solar mass is lying within this radius. Presently, about 70% are contained within half of the solar radius or 12% of the total volume. We are now holding our position at 500,000 kilometers in the interior of the Sun and observe its evolution into the future. During the next 3 billion years, the brightness will continue to increase slowly. The solar radius is hardly changing during this time. More and more hydrogen is being burnt in the center until it will be consumed completely after another 5 billion years. Outside the center, however, enough hydrogen is still available and the production of energy is shifting there. We are going to fly deeper into the center where the action is. When hydrogen burning is ceasing in the center, the whole core is contracting and mass is getting more concentrated. The more exterior layers are expanding simultaneously. The Sun is getting larger rapidly. To follow the further evolution, we back up beyond Jupiter's orbit. In connection with the swelling of the Sun, its brightness also increases strongly. Because of the increase of its size, the Sun is engulfing the nearest planets. Mercury first, then Venus. The Earth is spared this time, but life has been extinguished long ago due to the strong increase of the solar brightness. Meanwhile, almost half of the solar mass is concentrated within the innermost 15,000 kilometers, while the solar radius has grown to almost 150 million kilometers. The Sun now is about 5,000 times brighter than today and has become a so-called red giant. The center is dense and hot enough to ignite the fusion of helium to carbon. This new source of energy is temporarily stabilizing the sun, which becomes smaller and dimmer again. The light blue regions indicate carbon freshly produced by helium fusion. All biological life is carbon-based. Here is the site where it is produced. After helium has been used up at the center, the Sun is producing its energy in two shells around the core. As earlier, the Sun is rapidly increasing in size and brightness. The further evolution of the Sun is now becoming very complicated and is taking place within only a few million years. Therefore, we have to resolve the luminosity evolution much better and retreat to a safe distance at the orbit of Uranus. Within a mere few 10,000 years, strong and regular brightness outbreaks occur, connected with huge variations in the solar size. In this phase, Earth will be devoured. We can hardly follow the variations in the interior any longer. We therefore restrict ourselves to consider only the rather regular brightness variations. About every 100,000 years, strong energy outbreaks occur during which the Sun is inflated to a gigantic balloon of hot gas within a few thousand years only. Mars is devoured as well.
these eruptions recur regularly. From the solar surface, a strong stellar wind is blowing matter into the space. In particular, during the quiet phase between outbreaks, the Sun is going to lose a large fraction of its mass. Because the solar mass is decreasing, the planet's orbits get larger. Finally, the Sun has lost half of its initial mass. No further energy production by nuclear fusion is possible and therefore the Sun begins to contract slowly. At the end it will become a white dwarf, consisting mostly of carbon and oxygen. It is fading away, becoming cooler and smaller. Its size will finally be comparable to that of Earth, which vanished long ago. This terminates the life of our Sun. Here we once more have an overview of the incredible size variations the Sun will be going through. The Sun today as a red giant and as a white dwarf. Although it will be hardly larger than Earth, the Sun even then will have 200,000 times more mass.